Hello and welcome to another session of Informally Formal. I am really excited today because we have amongst us a heavyweight as far as the energy um, space in Bangladesh is concerned. Uh, professor Muhammad Tamim has been a uh, professor in Buet for several decades. Um, he has uh, also been a special assistant to the chief advisor in the caretaker government in 2008 in charge of Power, Energy, and Mineral Resources Ministry. He was also pro-VC for BRAC, uh, I believe from 2018 on, about a year and a half. And if I hear correctly, he is gonna be the new Dean of Engineering at Buet. So without further ado, a very warm welcome to you, Professor Tamim. Thank you, thank you for your generous introduction. All right, so just to set the premise, um, uh, energy security is very important for any country as it is for Bangladesh. Now, the current government has made great strides in um, the energy sector. Everyone knows that, uh, but there lingers some ongoing questions in regards to what ought to be the future of energy in Bangladesh, in particular, the energy mix. So, Professor Tamim, my first question to you is uh, overall landscape, energy landscape, and in particular, in your opinion, what do you think moving forward, what the energy mix ought to be? Over to you, Professor Tamim. If we look at the picture of 2005, there has been three power system master plans that has been uh, presented to us by Power Development Board or the Ministry. The first one is, was in 2005, PSMP. We call it PSMP 2005. And that one was fully based on gas. We didn't talk about energy mix or anything at that time. We thought that there will be an unlimited supply of gas and we'll have a lot of gas in future. So the plan was very gas heavy. Alternate scenario, little bit of alternate scenario was shown that is less gas and more gas based on the still gas. But within two years, we came to know that there is a huge shortage of gas. We ran out of gas, our own gas. So within two, three years, that power system master plan, that was a 20 year plan was discarded. And we started working on the next plan. And that was in PSMP, that is the new plan is PSMP 2010. Now PSMP 2010 had several driving factors. One of them is price. Gas, because in the indigenous gas, our electricity production was about two and a half taka per kilowatt hour during the 2005, six, seven period. But because we had to switch to oil because of shortage of the gas in the short term, we thought that that switching will be short term into rental power plant and the cost of production increased. And as a result, and up to 2010, the power tariff was revised upward four or five times. And it went from 2.5 taka, it went up to five and a half, six taka per kilowatt hour. So the main major driving force was to ensure an energy mix that will minimize the cost of electricity production. And as a result, 50% of the PSMP energy mix was coal based in 2010 uh, plan. Out of that, 50% coal-based power, 30% would have come from our local coal and 20% from imported coal. But again, within short period, the government declared that we are not going to produce our own coal right now. Obviously, that PSMP 2010 fell apart immediately because 30% of that production energy mix coming from coal, our own coal. So again, a new power system master plan was formulated. And this is, this is known as the PSMP 2016. This is the latest power system master plan, 2016. In the 2016 power system master plan, the energy mix was 35% coal, 35% gas, gas local, as well as imported LNG and 10% coming from nuclear and imported energy. 
So all this together, a new energy mix was proposed. Now, if you look at today's energy mix, this was proposed in 2016. We have an energy mix pro, uh, projection of 2005, 2010, and 2016. Today, in terms of electricity production, we have about 55% installed capacity is gas-based and 37% is oil-based. So no coal is only now, because of the new Pyra power plant, coal has come up to four and a half, five percent right now. So at any point in the last 15, 20 years, whatever fuel mix have been proposed, in reality, we could never match that in a fuel mix. Today, we are seeing that. So the government actually, government has run on an ad hoc basis, although we have these long-term plans a lot. So most of the decision has been taken on a firefighting ad hoc basis. That whatever comes in, whatever is viable, okay, let's go go ahead and do it. So right. kind of, you know, it is, it is difficult. It, it has a, uh, there are several issues. There is a financial issue. There is a infrastructure issue because we found that even this 35% coal is difficult because it's all import based. We don't have coal import infrastructure. So that is the current difficulty now. We have in 2016 proposal, it was say 35% come from coal, imported coal, but we don't have enough infrastructure to import 35% equivalent coal, which is very high. All these uh, plans also projected the future power demand forecasted demand and historically our demand has been always higher than the actual which is okay that is the when you when you when you forecast it demand you don't want to do it on the lower side okay you want to do it on the higher side so that is the that is the historical energy mix scenario in bangladesh but future i as i told you is going more towards sustainable energy and right. Uh, government is uh, unfortunately in all these three programs electricity generation forecasting plans renewable energy was not given much emphasis so although uh, Bangladesh renewable energy policy says that by 2020 we should have got about 10 percent power coming from renewable energy so right. the future they are going to do a 2021 power system master plan I don't know what will be the consideration in that plan, but uh, that is to be seen. Let me recap what uh, you uh, have uh, said so far is we started with the uh, 2005 PSMP, the master plan, which fell yes. apart in, in no time. And then uh, right. the 2010 uh, PSMP, which again, the mix was not very, uh, whatever was defined was not followed through because I don't know why we uh, have uh, failed in our power sector master plan. I mean, I would say uh, that we have not been able to put together a coherent plan. And then again in 2016, where we identified that you know 35% would come from coal and 35% uh, from gas. And then of course we also have HFO and some import and what have you. But in any event, uh, what comes across very loud and clear, uh, Professor Tamim, is uh, coal. Uh, one is the government decided that, you know, our own high-grade coal from Borapakuria and what have you is not going to be extracted. So uh, we will rely on imported coal. But then with coal, as you rightly mentioned, comes another big headache, which is coal handling is another animal all by itself. Our reliance still remains very much with gas and imported LNG that basically then gets... Uh, uh, Regasified into our system. Is that pretty much uh, encapsulate uh, what you were saying, Professor Tamim? Right now, we are producing about 67, 68 percent electricity from gas, although our installed capacity is 55 percent gas, but gas based power is used more, produced, it is producing more energy. Uh, rest, about 30 percent, 35 percent is coming from oil, HFO, and diesel. So that is a very risky fuel mix right now. 
So we got to get rid of these oil-based power plants gradually. Right now, government is focused on these three power plants, coal-based power plants. One is Matarbari, which is about 1,200 megawatt, and then 1,320 megawatt in Rampal, and uh, 1,320 in Paira, which is already commissioned, actually. It is now producing 600 megawatt. Another 600 will come in once the transmission line is completed. So these three combines about 4,000 megawatt. There are several other plants coal-based. I'm not sure, actually, what would be the future of those. Uh, we will see. Uh, there is a plan of extending the Pyra plant because that has been very successful. It came one time. It is a state-of-the-art, supercritical uh, coal-based power plant. So, Professor Tamim, in whatever time that we have left, what I would like to ask you is uh, if you would encapsulate, in your opinion, having been a veteran of this space, in your opinion, what ought to be the right mix for Bangladesh? I believe that we have to uh, reduce the oil dependency. That is the number one criteria. The coal-based power plant, the, those we are having now, they should go ahead, the three plants. That will give us 4,000 megawatt, which is uh, solid base power plants. Uh, we should be very careful ex expanding the coal-based power plants anymore. So if our ultimate goal is to go to a sustainable, renewable power, we have to have a transition plan. If you look at the Western countries, those who have switched from coal into renewables, and they are switching gradually from coal into renewables, the transition has been supported by gas-based power plants. So it is the best of the fossil fuel. Yes, absolutely. Okay. In terms of pollution, in terms of pollution is the best. In terms of efficiency, also the 55% combined cycle efficiency. So when we are switching and the switch has to be gradual, it should be the switching, switching fuel should be gas. We may have some coal in our mix, maybe 10, 15% coal, and then a heavy uh, gas presence, and then as we ramp up the renewables, mostly solar power plants, as well as imported power. If we can bring in renewables, hydro and renewable India, Nepal, Bhutan, that will be a good transition towards uh, sustainable development or our uh, net zero goal. So definitely we, we should head towards that. But I think transition in transition, gas should be the main. And you, you know we have a solid gas-based infrastructure Professor Tamil, I'm sure you know, the government is in talks with uh, Nepal and Bhutan for an intra-regional um, uh, power agreement. Uh, it, it, there's been recent news as well uh, that, uh, you know, so I agree with you. If we can uh, get some uh, hydroelectric power from our neighboring countries, that would be, um, that would be great. If I hear you correctly, um, of course, uh, gas is the... Uh, cleaner mode and of course if you can get hydroelectric power um, so uh, limit our coal footprint to the three that we have perhaps expand pyra a little bit if i hear you correctly now right all of that coal so you're basically saying we rely on imported coal and not use as the government has indicated that uh, we're not going to utilize the high grade uh, local coal that we have available so that's pretty much what uh, the mix going forward, including, of course, the nuclear um, plant that we have. Uh, when will that be coming in line? Very quickly, uh, Professor Tamim, we're coming to an end of our session here. So. The nuclear is two units. It is 1,200 megawatts, 600 and 600. So 23 will be, first unit will be coming at 23, and then second unit in 24. Just percentage-wise, tell me what um, uh, our mix ought to be, number one. Very quickly, your opinion on is it wise not to use our local coal and just be based on imports? Two things, very quickly to wrap it up. In terms of mix, I would be happy. I would be happy by 2030 if we can achieve 15% from renewable energy. Even 10%, I'll be happy. Because if you look, our, look at our track record in terms of renewable, and that in next 10 years, if we can uh, scale it up to 10%, that will be a huge jump. So that will be a very good achievement. Very good. Uh, coal should be, any, again, coal should be 10-15%, not more than 15%, maybe. So 25%, I would say, 
40-50% coming from gas and the rest from nuclear and others. I'm not sure how we are going to grow economically and how the world uh, supply, our, our, I mean, fossil fuel supply is going to be. Uh, we may have to decide to mine our own coal, full body and bottle All right, Professor Tamim, I, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it right there. What a pleasure it's been, uh, always a pleasure talking to you. Professor Tamim, I would like to thank you on behalf of our audience so very much. I know you've been busy. Uh, you just barely made time coming from another, um, another seminar. You're much in demand. So once again, thank you so much. And I would like to thank our audience thank for you. joining us. Stay safe uh, and I'll catch you in our next session. Bye-bye.